All right, so we have got a. Uh, this is a rough one. <laughs> this is in bad, bad shape. Uh, this is a red line show off. Uh, very few of these were made. They're only made for one year, to my knowledge. Um, and they're quite collectible. Uh, this, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, this car in this condition cost me $25, which is embarrassing that I spent that much. But I, I just couldn't find anything for cheaper, and this was by far the cheapest. The next least expensive one was close to $100, and it was in bad shape. Um, like ones in good shape will tend generally go, at least be listed, for the $300 range. So I don't know how much they actually go for. So uh, we have got a lot of damage. This is going to be a big restoration. It's going to need a new windshield. It's completely broken. Uh, it's caved in, so I'm going to have to re-bend this out. It needs new wheels. Uh, this was not originally black. Uh, it was some, it looks like maybe red. It's hard to tell. Uh, but whatever it is, it was in bad shape. So uh, we, we've got a lot of work. What I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on using this uh, pink enamel that I got from the Redline shop. This is not been released as of making this video. Perhaps by the time this video comes out, he'll have released it. He was talking about doing it uh, this weekend or soon. But this is hot pink enamel. It's a new color. And, uh, boy, I'm really looking forward to, to using it. Um, so, anyway, uh, let's get this guy apart and uh, see if we can make it look better. Temper your expectations. It's unlikely I'll be able to make this look good as new, but I am going to make it look a lot better. Alright, so this base is going to need a lot of work. It's pretty corroded. Very corroded. Uh, thankfully the axles are in great shape. and uh, But we do have a little bit of a, an issue because this is not a cap. This is a through and through. And they started doing this around this, this era. They stopped using the caps. So the back are caps it looks like. Let me make sure. Go. Yep, those were... So caps, very hard to <laughs> pull off. Usually they come right off, but that one was not easy to come off. Uh, these front are like your traditional wheels, kind of like, kind of like these black walls. Uh, you've got a an axle through them, and uh, they, you don't really find replacements of those. Um, I do have a source though, so you'll see what I do with those in a second. All right, so. The windshield is squashed and broken. And it's actually squished down into the interior. I don't want to break it any more than it is. Yeah. So that's going to be a challenge. I think I'm up to the challenge, but that is going to be a challenge to remake. And the interior is actually pretty good. It's a little broken there, but that'll be easy to fix. So this will be cleaned up. It's not in bad shape. And uh, this guy is really bad. I think I'm going to drill out this engine so I can clean it separately. There we go. Yeah. So this is just going to be chromed. That'll be easy. Oh, look, it was red at one point. Uh, pink is the most valuable color. In fact, a pink one of these is worth, according to my price guide, into the thousands. So, of course we're going to make it pink. All right, so first thing we need to do is get this in the stripper tank to get everything stripped off. Uh, then we're going to have to address this. Um, I haven't quite decided how it's going to happen. Oh, oh man, that's going to be hard to get back. I should not have dropped that in. I did not mean to do that. I was going to show it to you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have to fish that out later. That's going to be hard. So while that, those parts are stripping, um, let's address these wheels. So what I'm going to do is I've got a bunch of these. That's about the right size. So what this is, this is a 25th anniversary car, and there are remakes of, of the original. These actually have quite a bit of value. Well, some value. 
Uh, they're worth about $10, $15. But new wheels and new parts, new windshields and stuff cost way more. So what I do and what a lot of people do is they use these for parts for the originals. Now, they don't always match up, and you got to be careful about that. Um, but this time, the wheels, I think, let me see, make sure. Yeah, that's going to work, I th think. I'll have to try it. Might not be exactly. Uh, but I have a few of these. So that one's a little bit too wide. But you keep looking at these and you'll find one that, that does fit eventually. So let me keep looking at those. So it looks like this Red Baron is going to be about the closest fit. Yeah. So I'm going to take this one apart and sell these wolves from it. So yeah, those will work real well. Now, uh, don't fear all these other parts from this car. Uh, I'm going to keep them, because who knows, someday I may restore a Red Baron and need some of these parts for that. So, yeah, I'm going to keep that. Removing these axles from the metal base can actually be a real pain in the butt. You can grind these down, that's one way to do it. But I've had problems accidentally hitting the sides here and damaging it when I grind it down with the Dremel. So this seems to be what works the best for me right now, but it's not perfect. So while that's going on, uh, I'm going to take this car, and I've got a young lady in my church that was complaining to her mom that all of her Hot Wheels were not pink or sparkly. So I went and I bought the most sparkly pinkish paint I could find, and I'm going to uh, customize this guy into a pink, a, a pink sparkly car. So I'm not going to show you how I do it, because I'm just going to repaint this, but uh, you'll see how sparkly and pink it looks uh, in just a second. So unfortunately, this is actually fully broken. I need to be super careful. What I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to reinforce this with some super glue and then start sanding it. I know it's warped, but uh, I think that for what I'm going to do, it's okay if it's warped because the plastic I'm going to use to replace this is, uh, is bendy. So I can bend it even if the, the mold that I make is a little bit warped. I'm going to sand this down. You can see it's kind of raised right there. It's not perfect, and that will show up in uh, what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to sand that down real quick. I'm going to use a vacuum former to create a new windshield. And what that does is it puts a piece of plastic over this and uh, sucks it down over top of it really tight. But this is, you see how flexible that is? It could even potentially break under the pressure. So I'm going to uh, fill this void with uh, epoxy resin in here. So I need to make a mold for that. I'm going to make the mold out of Play-Doh. Bubbles don't matter because this is not the end product. And now we'll just wait 24 hours. Let's see how this worked. Oh yeah, perfect. So now when I use the mold press, I'll be able to put lots of pressure on this without worry that it's gonna break the windshield. So this is really the biggest problem. Obviously, it's been stepped on or or something. Something's hit it and caved that in. It's not as bad as it looks. It's not terrible. If you look at on this side, which is not done, it's, it's still a pretty shallow. It's a pretty small window, so it's not that bad. Uh, with this old casting, um, you know, people will say you need to heat it up, and that can help. My my issue in the past when I've heated something up, it's ended up melting it. You definitely don't want to put a torch on it. So you have to eat it up very slowly. And um, heating up doesn't make it as, as pliable as you think. Um, I find that it's it's 
probably not worth the risk. And also, if you strike it, so another thing you might want to think, well, I'll just take a hammer and I'll hammer it out. Um, that can also lead to cracks. So what you want to do is you want to slowly push it out. And, you know, with my hand, I'm not strong enough. So I'm going to um, use this vise, and I'm going to cut some wood blocks, and then I'm going to slowly screw this in to uh, hopefully push out that net. So that worked really well. A lot better than I was expecting, honestly. I need to go over this with some uh, the file because it got roughed up. But look what happened. So after I popped this out, I noticed that this, uh, this post was slightly bent in. So I went and just to just slightly tweak it, and it just disintegrated into about half a dozen parts. I mean, almost powder. Um, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Not the end of the world, though, because what I can do is I can take a little piece of brass rod, and I can shape it and uh, glue it in. And, uh, yeah, you'd be able to tell. You'll be able to tell if you look closely that it's not supposed to be there, but it's going to be pretty close um, by the time I'm done. Okay, that's pretty good. Not perfect, but we can make it perfect after we get it in there with some glue and putty. I'm going to glue this up off camera because, man, I can barely <laughs> see it on camera. Got to get my magnifier on and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think this is going to look... Quite nice. So I've been filing these down a little bit. Um, there's no way I'm going to get all those dents out. If I did, I would like totally change the contours of this card and look different in the front. Um, so I'm just getting the worst of it out. And you'll still be able to tell. I was not expecting to get this car 100%. Oh, hit the camera. Jeez, I hate it when I do that. Um, but I'm definitely going to look better. This is still drying. I'm going to give it probably 24 hours before I start to file it down and, and get the get it looking better. But I'm, I'm really pleased with that fit. Uh, yeah, so you can see I'm going to do some sanding. I'm going to sand over this whole thing. It's going to be primed and painted, so that means I can use putty and, and sanding. You can see those marks up there. Those came from when from the clamp when I was bending it out. So there's a lots of little problems with this, but uh, nothing insurmountable. I've definitely dealt with worse. So I'd like for you to notice how small that post is. I've never worked with a post that small. So I've got to drill down to the center of it to be able to screw a screw into that to put the uh, the base back on. This one's tall, but again, this is super skinny. They're usually much wider than this. So I'm going to have to be extremely precise to get this done. This one, oh man, I don't know. The only good thing is that if I mess up and go too far through it, it's going to be covered up by the uh, by the engine so that's a positive so it'll probably be okay my intention is also to screw this in so I'm going to drill that that way when I I can screw this engine in and the reason why I'm going to screw it in instead of glue it is uh, so I can remove it in the future so uh, this is my reasoning 10, 20 years down the road, if I'm still doing this, I might run into one of these cars that doesn't have the engine, and that's like super common. Very common to find these without the engine. And uh, these replacement, this is this is like it's $20 to buy this now, and who knows how long they'll be uh, made because these parts go in and out of manufacture all the time. But if I have one, I can easily create a mold and cast my own. So if I can put this in with the screws, I can just unscrew this car, unscrew the base, unscrew this engine, make a mold of it later, and then put it back together and you won't even be able to tell that I touched it. So that's, I'm kind of future-proofing myself by screwing this in instead of gluing it in. So I got just enough to get it to bite the screw. So that looks surprisingly good. Remember you're seeing it zoomed in big time in reality. Even that's bigger than what you're going to see in real life. Okay, so let me start working on some of these other areas. This body's getting close to being done. We're doing great. Do -do 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 -do. Sanding is so boring. Do -do 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 -do. This is my least favorite part. 
Okay, so we see we got a little pits up here. I think what I am going to end up doing is using a little bit of putty on the top. Maybe on the bottom here. Some of these are so minor that the primer is probably going to fill in. That's a big one there. I'm not sure if these are pits or if they're dents from play. This was a well played with car. Just going to use a little bit. It's very easy to overdo putty and then end up making more work for you than you need it. So what I do is I put a really thin coat on it and then I'll sand that off and then I might do it again if I still see some some pits but you can see like that big one there is almost all already filled in. This base is about as corroded as I've ever seen one. It's in really bad shape. It's not really pitted too bad but it's definitely got tons of corrosion on it and there's a little bit of paint here. I think I'm going to get this paint off before I get off the corrosion because sometimes the chemical reaction that I use to get the corrosion off, uh, paint can interfere with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in sulfamic acid. If you've seen my other videos, you know I do this a lot. And what this does is it eats away at the corrosion and softens it. So I can just basically just wipe it off easily with some steel wool. Otherwise it takes lots of sanding uh, because this is a really hard substance. So that cleaned up really nice. I'm not going to polish it because that's not, it wasn't originally, to my knowledge, it wasn't originally like mirror shined. I could do that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I think this is, uh, this looks really good. So we're going to put some wheels on this guy now. If you remember, I got these that I took from that uh, 25th anniversary car and then the original axles for the back, so I can't put those in quite yet. So all I'm going to do is put a little drop of glue right in there to keep them together. So I'm just going to put a little drop of glue right in there to keep it. Alright, here's the plan for painting. White Silent Res as a primer for the car. The reason why we're using a primer is so that the pink will be as bright as possible and uh, all these little blemishes won't show through. And then for the engine, I'm going to go with the uh, Redline Shop base coat to make that nice and shiny, just really uniform and not look old. So let's do that, and when you see this next, it's going to be beautiful and pink, hopefully. So here's the sparkly car for my young friend. It's as sparkly as I could get it. Hope she likes it. And here is the pink of the show-off. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. I think I did an okay job. The roof was never going to get perfect. But I think it's good. So let's start putting this guy together. It's going to take a little bit. Engine turned out really nice. The windshield turned out just okay. Um, it's only as good as the original, and that, that break in it was so pronounced. Even after sanding, you can see it there. That did show up. I don't think you're, it's going to be very noticeable. I'll tell you what, doing this while you're filming makes it ten times as hard. Alright, so here we got it. Rolls nice, looks nice. Boy, what an improvement. There we go, that's a nice, nice view. All right, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, definitely an improvement. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you remember, this is the before. And now we have the after. And I appreciate you watching, and I'd also like to put out a thank you to the Redline Shop, because uh, they sent me this new hot pink pink. I don't know when it's going to be uh, released. Um, I think John said it was going to be pretty soon. Uh, I hope so because I'd like to see uh, more cars that you guys do done like this. This is really nice paint. It's got a, a lot of depth that I was not expecting. Um, really nice. 
So anyway, I appreciate you watching this video, and I hope uh, to see you again. Goodbye. <laughs>